Joshua Collins is a 25-year-old truck driver looking to unseat Democratic incumbent Denny Heck from Washington's 10th Congressional District. It's a long shot, but Joshua and his team of hundreds of campaign volunteers have had it with the corporate bought-out Democratic establishment. The reason I'm running is I'm, I'm mad. I'm mad that you know both the Democrats and the Republicans are taking all this money and then you know saying that they're going to represent us and what we need. And then they're not. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's what you're dealing with with the guy that's currently representing your district. Right, yeah. I mean, he takes money from you know the banks, the insurance companies, the healthcare industry, the, all the war profiteers, the private prisons, the fossil fuel industry. I mean, everybody, he's taking everyone. money from everybody. <laughs> Anyone who'll write this guy a check, he'll wow. take it. Denny Heck is like many Democrats who take big corporate cash. Though many of the presidential candidates have sworn off PAC money, Congress is still very bought out. Denny Heck, for example, has taken hundreds of thousands from the healthcare industry and just so happens to be against Medicare for all. He's also taken over 100,000 from oil and gas, and mm, he's also against the Green New Deal. And the Democratic Party, claiming to be for the people, have made it clear that if anyone like Joshua tries to challenge an incumbent Democrat, or if anyone tries to help him, advisors, campaign managers, individuals or groups, they'll be blacklisted. How's that for democracy? Going after an incumbent Democrat, because this guy does mm -hmm. have a D next to his name, you yeah. know, and the Democratic Party has come out saying that they will not support any candidate mm -hmm. who is going to primary an incumbent. Clearly, right. they're afraid of this. I mean, after Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez got in there, um, you'd think that they'd want more of that. Mm -hmm. And you'd think that they would encourage somebody like her because she's been so invigorating for the party, but they've done the opposite. And they're actually mm -hmm. saying, you try it and you're dead to us. So, I yeah. mean, what's been your experience with them? Well, the thing I've learned is when you run against these people, you're not just running for Congress, you're attacking an empire. These people are very comfortable and powerful. They don't want to be challenged. They don't want someone who's gonna say things that go against what they're doing. So when I talk about how uh, you know Donald Trump is, uh, he has this very aggressive foreign policy and then uh, point out the fact that my Democrat uh, party uh, representative is doing the same stuff, they don't like that. They don't like having uh, any of their corruption challenged. Well, is your district um, more conservative or something? I mean, is that why this guy keeps winning and he's kind of a really a Republican, but with a D? I mean, is what's up with your district? Uh, we have a, a safely blue district. Um, and the reason he keeps winning is just because he outspends his opponents by, uh, you know, a million and a half dollars. Uh, his last election, his opponent had $8,000 and got 40% of the vote. He still spent a million and a half dollars oh just to beat him. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it, doesn't, it, it seems like the district's not that thrilled with him. I mean, if they're going right. to go and vote for somebody else who only raised $8,000, mm -hmm. <laughs> then they're kind of just looking for almost anybody to replace this guy in a way. Yeah. Um, you know, he's the epitome of vote blue no matter who politics. Got it. And, you know, when, when he's out there uh, going on in the media, he's not even talking about what he's going to do for his district district he's talking about how he opposes Trump and uh, oh, he's one of those guys exactly yeah. you know he's he's a Russia gator all every time he goes on Fox News he talks about how you know Russia rigged the election when he was one of the super delegates delegates for Hillary Clinton so he was part of the rigged primary against Bernie Sanders and so he really has no interest in you know fixing our democracy um, you know he's totally okay with all of the corporate in influence on our democracy but when it comes to you know whatever uh, Trump is doing then suddenly he has these uh, you know moral posturing that he does uh, so you've now filed the papers have mm -hmm. you gotten a phone call from the, anybody in the Democratic Party I mean anything at all um, I've had a lot of people who uh, work within the Democratic Party who are progressives and who are tired of the system who have reached out to me um, a lot of them can't say anything publicly because they know the ramifications and that they know they know that the establishment will do everything they can to bury them as well. So uh, I mean, that is just such bullshit. Right. It, it's it's infuriating. Mm -hmm. So are you backed by anybody that's helping you with this? I mean, I know that, like I said, the, the Democratic Party has basically mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, we're not we're not going to support or help any anybody primarying an incumbent. Right. But there are groups. Yeah. And are you getting any support from them? Uh, yeah, you know, um, we're very close to having uh, the full support of brand new Congress. 
um, you know, we're doing vetting for our revolution um, and we're looking at the Justice Democrats. Uh, we've got in touch with them uh, and the DSA as well has, uh, has reached out to me. So uh, very soon they're going to be a lot of help. They've already sent some people to my campaign to help me with things like building a website, uh, you know, just general advice on, you know, what's, what to do and who to talk to. So uh, there are a lot of groups now uh, that have been building over the last four years since the 2016 election who can help people like me to actually get their campaign off the ground. Mm -hmm. Unlike Congressman Heck, who's worth roughly six million dollars, Joshua grew up with modest means. His mother was a nurse and she could only afford to buy him brand new clothes once in his childhood. He once suffered for weeks with a severe allergy because he was unable to afford medical treatment. And he even missed the last few moments of his grandmother's life because a boss told him if he took time off from work to go be by her side, he would lose his job. And in order to make ends meet, Joshua and his wife, who are both truck drivers, live full time in their truck. Now Joshua Collins pushes for policies that are for the people. So let's talk about your policies. So you've got quite a few, mm -hmm. but I want to hit on your four big ones. Mm -hmm. So starting off with uh, automation, actually, because automation. you're a truck driver, you and your wife. Andrew Yang has talked about right. this a lot of your industry in particular mm -hmm. being automated away. What's your take on automation and really Andrew Yang's solution or if you have a different solution or if you think, oh, no, it's not a big deal? <laughs> well, I think the important thing to recognize is that automation is coming. It's a giant threat to our economy combined with outsourcing as well. Um, and the fix for those two things is uh, very similar. I like the idea of a universal basic income. My problem with Andrew Yang's is that it does uh, it. it doesn't really include any help for people who are on social security or disability. And there are some other issues with that. But ultimately, I think uh, dealing with automation, we need to directly uh, deal with the workers and make sure that they are being taken care of. If someone's job is going to be outsourced or automated, they should be taken care of. We shouldn't be leaving them to, to fend for themselves uh, after they've put you know years or decades into an industry. And so my plan for automation, uh, especially with the trucking industry, is to ban automated trucks until the workers are taken care of. Okay. And so that doesn't mean we'll never automate the, the jobs away. It just means that we make sure that the workers have somewhere to go before we put the automated trucks on the road. Got it. So it's got to be phased in. You exactly. can't just say, okay, boom, well, you're right. out of a job, but here's a thousand bucks. <laughs> yeah, right. So you obviously support Medicare for All, I, I would assume. I fully support it, and we need to implement it as quickly as possible. No caveats, no bullshit about uh, you know access to getting the chance to you know maybe have an incremental step. No, no, no. We, mean, we need Medicare for All, and we need it now. And the current guy that's in your district doesn't support Medicare for All, is that right? Yes, and it's part of the reason I'm running against him because when he was pushed and we tried to, you know, uh, lobby him, you know, people, activists come up and ask him and, you know, we'd make the case. Uh, he actually didn't budge at all. He went the, the opposite way. He said explicitly, he will never support Medicare for that's All. That's what he said? Yes, and oh, he's God. a Democrat. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, Green New Deal. Uh, well, the Green New Deal, um, I'm fully support in support of it. I've been in my own congressman's office trying to talk to him about it, and he won't even uh, actually talk to anyone about it. He won't listen. Um, he sends staff instead of actually meeting with activists uh, because he has no interest in it. He's taking money from the fossil fuel industry, which uh, would you know lose a little bit of money from the Green New mm -hmm. Deal. Um, and it's important that we actually do a Green New Deal because you know we only have about 11 years to really curb our climate. Uh, our carbon emissions mm -hmm. and if we are we continue down this path it's the amount of lives that will be lost and just the destruction will be disastrous and so what we need to do uh, in order to get everyone on board with this is uh, include the uh, benefit of workers in it. So if we do an infrastructure plan that has a federal jobs guarantee and uh, provides decent paying quality jobs, we can have uh, a really good um, plan to improve our economy and, and fix our infrastructure and prepare it for climate change. And that is how we get people on board with it. That is why the, the Green New Deal is so important. Um, instead of spending all of our, our, our budget on war in the Middle East and uh, you know for, for oil and, and, and natural gas, we should be putting 
our resources here at home into improving our infrastructure, to getting everyone clean water, to um, you know, in, uh, installing solar panels, to transitioning our cities to green energy, but instead we're spending it, you know, for regime change to war. And the politicians, like the one I'm running against, are taking money from the fossil fuel industry. So they have no interest in, in you know, hearing our side or actually doing anything about it. And he's taking money from the military industrial <laughs> exactly. complex. Exactly, so yeah. Really no desire to shift the money away from the wars towards. Yeah, I mean, we're paying him over $175,000 a year to represent us but his corporate donors are paying a million, him a million and a half dollars to represent their interests. Yeah. So in reality, who is he representing? I think it's clear. Yeah. So let's talk about um, your idea for soldier pay, which is kind of yeah. interesting. What are you wanting to do with it? I want to double the starting pay of people who enlist in the military. Double? Double it. Yeah. Why double it? Uh, well, because right now the starting pay for someone who joins the military um, is $19,000. $19,000? Yeah. So not even, it's, it's, bare, it's, it's below the minimum wage when you count for the hours they work. These people work, you know, countless hours uh, throughout the year, sometimes 60, 70 hours a week, and they're getting uh, $19,000 a year. When you do the math, it's less than the $7.25 uh, minimum wage for the federal How government. How do they even get away with that? That seems so strange. It's the military. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so why we need people that. like me fighting for it, because if I go to Congress, I'm going to be bringing up the fact that we pay them such a poor wage. Uh, in, and it, it kind of goes to the fact that I'm advocating for ending the wars. Uh, I don't want anyone who is in the military to think that I'm uh, I'm not going to worry about their interests. We're not just going to end the wars and have a bunch of people out of the job. We're going to put them to work on our infrastructure under the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and we're going to double their pay. And what that would do to the military budget, we'll be spending less on bombs, but um, military expenditures are only about 10% of our budget. So we're 90% of the money that we're spending on military, which is over $700 billion a year. 90% uh, of that's going towards you know, contractors, towards Boeing and Raytheon, who donate to uh, a lot of our politicians, including of my course. opponent. Of course, so. yeah. So you're saying that um, these soldiers, because you want to end the wars, yeah. it doesn't mean you're wanting to then end the military and, and right. cut people. And you're yeah. saying, no, we'll, we'll double your pay. But right. you're going to be moved in doing something uh, different, different types of, of jobs. Yeah, and it makes the most rational and moral sense. You know, these people are, uh, most of the people who join the military, they join for financial reasons. And there's polling on this by our own government that shows, uh, you know, a vast majority, they join for uh, an education, a decent job. They join for, uh, you know, to take care of their family, health care. And uh, we're also talking about not only get, providing um, everyone in our country those things, for, through a Medicare for All system, through a federal jobs guarantee, uh, but we're also talking about increasing the minimum wage to 15 or more dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even caught the military up to the 7.25 an hour minimum wage. So why why would we not increase their wage, basically? So how do we pay for all of this? <laughs> how we pay for it? Um, you know, I believe in a progressive tax taxation system. And what that means is we revive the, or we, we bring back the tax policies of people like FDR and Eisenhower, a Republican and a Democrat. They both saw that, um, you know, when very wealthy people are, are doing very well in this country, um, we need to be taxing them to, uh, you know, actually spend on our own country and invest in our people. Um, and if they want lower tax rates as a wealthy person or as a large corporation, well, paying your employees more is a tax deductible expense. Mm -hmm. Well, and also, you know, just shifting, we're really just kind of shifting priorities and shifting where the money goes. So instead right. of the military industrial complex to buy bombs and, yeah. uh, and weapons, um, if we put that towards infrastructure, obviously money is getting dumped into that area exactly. rather than this other area. It's just shifting right. where the money's going. And the, uh, another issue is that a lot of the federal uh, spending doesn't really get spent towards be benefiting you know, middle class, like working class people. So I also believe that we should cut the, uh, the federal income taxes of people under $80,000 a year in half. Wow. Um, I actually think they, they pay too much in federal income taxes. You know, they still pay into Medicare, or they still pay into Social Security. They also pay a lot in, in uh, state and local taxes. Most states and, and you know, local uh, taxes are very regressive, meaning the, the poorer you are, the higher percentage of your income you yeah. pay towards that. So if you're making $60,000 a year, you're paying more towards taking care of your community than someone like Jeff Bezos is. 
Joshua is shy. He's not a gifted public speaker, and he could probably never be a salesman. He's not your typical politician, but that's the point. Up until recently, he didn't even look like this. When Joshua decided he was going to run for Congress, he took serious steps to be taken seriously. And don't be fooled by Joshua's age. Even I was skeptical at first, thinking, oh, here's a guy who sees AOC and he's maybe chasing after the same fame. But after sitting down and talking to him, I am convinced Joshua is very serious and I think he actually has a shot at winning. That is, if he can get the support from people like you and me. So how can people help you out? How's your campaign doing? Well, um, we are... uh planning to knock on 250,000 doors. Whoa! Uh, and, you Your know, knuckles I, are gonna bleed! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and personally, I'm go- I've already pledged that I'm gonna knock 25,000 doors with my own hand. Wow! So, uh, you know, we have a lot of work to do. Um, we're gonna need an army of volunteers. Um, and as far as fundraising, we're never gonna outraise my opponent, but we do need to raise probably about, around 10% of what he uh, spends every election cycle, which is $150,000. So how can people donate to you? Uh, they can go to joshua2020.com. Uh, Joshua2020.com. How did you get that? That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I would have done Collins2020, but that's taken by Susan Collins. So, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, so joshua2020.com, and then people can donate to your campaign. And yes. is that where they can also sign up to volunteer if they're in your district? Or are you taking volunteers everywhere or just in your district? Or how does that work? We're taking volunteers from everywhere. So um, right now, about 80% of our volunteers are in our district, but the 20% that aren't, those are people who can do phone banking, they can do text banking, and they, they can also get notifications when we have a, a, something we really want them to watch. So if we're uh, you know, doing a really cool interview like, like this one, then you know, we can let them know and just you know, send an email out to them so they can see that and then share it. Um, and they can also follow me on Twitter. I'm very active on there. Um, I have uh, Joshua, or Joshua for Congress. Um, and then same thing on Instagram. Uh, so I'm, I'm also on Facebook and those are all on my website. So you can just click on the link on my website, um, to find my social as well. Well, I, I have a good feeling. I think that this, yeah. I think, I think you might pull it off actually. I hope so. Um, we need more, as many of us as we can in Congress. You know, we've already got Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you know, Ilhan Omar, uh, Rashida Tlaib and, uh, Rokana, which, you know, they're doing so much work with only four or five of them in Congress. So imagine what happens when we have 20, 30, 40 of us.